MLS All-Stars versus Real Madrid. What? 2017 All-Star game? That was awesome. A packed soldier field in Chicago, a late goal to tie it, a PK shootout. What was wrong with that? Nothing, actually, because I'm not talking about that game. I'm talking about the other time the MLS All-Stars played Real Madrid, and that was not awesome. Let me explain. Okay, so you can separate the MLS All-Star game into two categories, or two different eras, if you will. MLS versus each other in the first few years, and MLS versus the world ever since. MLS versus each other, most of the time, was East versus West, conference versus conference, proven method in American sports, and it was fun. It did its job. But after a while, the game sort of got out of hand, with scorelines like 9-4 to four and 6-6. Six to six. Yeah, entertaining, if you like a lot of goals with backlines that aren't really trying, but it was clear that this format had run its course, and they needed to try something new. In 2002, MLS began to experiment with the MLS All-Stars taking on the U.S. men's national team. It was a great idea, capitalizing on the momentum that the O2 World Cup team brought. Even though, it wasn't really the real U.S. men's national team, because there weren't any European-based players on the roster, and some of the starters on this day weren't even on the World Cup team. But it was still a fun event and something to build off of. 2003 is when the All-Star game really embraced its new format. MLS All-Stars versus Chivas Guadalajara of Liga MX. And now, the game really meant something. Playing a Mexican club, pride was now on the line for MLS. And a whole new audience was now unlocked in this match. No longer was it just diehard fans paying attention to the All-Star game. Now, you had outsiders taking a look and paying attention. This is a good thing, especially when the MLS All-Stars prevailed 3-1 in what ended up being a massive success for the league by 2003 standards. So what's the encore for 2004? Real Madrid. Holy shit, okay, MLS ain't fucking around anymore. I mean, hey, Chivas is cool, but Real Madrid, like, this is David Beckham, Ronaldo, Zidane. Like, this is gonna be huge. But that game never took place. In fact, MLS didn't face any international opponent in 2004. They went back to East versus West for the All-Star game. Here's what happened. Real Madrid crapped the bed at the end of the 03-04 season, somehow losing its last five Ooh. matches and dropping them all the way to fourth place in La Liga. This meant that they were not automatically placed in the group stages of the Champions League, and they now had to play an extra qualifying round. And to prepare for that Champions League qualifier, Real Madrid opted to play two matches in Japan in the preseason, rather than going on a full US tour. The All-Star game was set for July 31st, a date MLS can't really move, while Real Madrid's qualifier for the Champions League was set for August 11th. A bummer, for sure. But I would hope that even the most diehard MLS fans would recognize that the UEFA Champions League is kind of a bigger deal than the MLS All-Star game. So that's why we got East versus West in 2004, because MLS had to scramble after Real Madrid backed out at the last minute, and there just wasn't enough time to book another international opponent. But MLS still wanted this game to happen. Badly. Because it would be the ultimate promotion for this league. In 2005, they would finally get its chance to take on Real Madrid. Not for the official MLS All-Star game, the opponent that year was Brian McBride's at Fulham FC. But instead, MLS sent over a select group of players to Madrid on August 23rd for the Trofeo Santiago Bernabeu, a annual preseason match between Real Madrid and an opponent from a different country. It's kind of like the preseason finale for Real Madrid, before the important games actually start. Now usually, it's against one of the biggest clubs in the world, or at least the biggest club from the country participating. The New England Revolution, were in first place at the time, were considered to represent MLS in 2005, but for some reason, 
it was decided to send an MLS All-Star team to go instead. Hmm, let's see, who would stand a better chance against Real Madrid, an established team who's been playing together all season, or a group of individuals who've never played together? Yeah, spoiler alert, it didn't go great. And I'm not saying the refs would be favorites in this one either, but come on. This MLS Select All-Star team was completely set up for failure. The first thing to point out was that this game was on a Tuesday, with everyone playing on the previous Saturday. That's already an extremely quick turnaround in normal circumstances. But now in this case, the players played on Saturday for their MLS team, then had to fly to Chicago, then fly to Madrid, get one training session in, where I imagine they all had to have crazy jet lag, and then game day on Tuesday, bring on Real Madrid. And that's not all. Some players didn't find out they were going until mere days before the game took place. Yeah, imagine training all week to play the Kansas City Wizards and then find out on Friday, oh yeah, after this game, you're gonna fly out the next day to go to Spain. What? So everyone in the locker room kinda knew that they weren't gonna win this one. But the players, despite the tough conditions and the brutal travel arrangements, most of them were happy to be there because this was, after all, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for most of these MLS players. But damn, MLS, could you at least include names on the back of the jerseys? Real Madrid were better than MLS. Oh yeah, I know, shocker, right? They were kind of toying with their opponents, being flashy, and MLS wasn't really able to get anything going offensively. But for 20 minutes, the game was scoreless, and you could at least say, hey, MLS is putting up a respectable fight here. And then David Beckham got a free kick, and he, yeah, does what David Beckham does. That's fine. 1-0. I mean, if MLS can keep it that way until halftime, they can regroup, they can put some fresh legs in there, and run all those springs free, and that's two. Yeah, you know, when you watch MLS week after week, you can kind of forget just how much better the best players in the world are. Especially when you get the opportunity to see them side by side. That's not a shot at MLS, by the way, because like I said, these are the best players in the world. There's no shame in getting burned by Ronaldo in 2005. 2-0 at halftime. Not great, but also not horrendous. Second half was more of the same. MLS just not getting anything going and Real Madrid continuing to make them look silly. Ronaldo burning the MLS backline again to make it 3-0. The best teams and the best players make it look easy. And admittedly, this looked pretty damn simple. Before the game, FC Dallas midfielder Ronnie O'Brien said in the locker room, as long as we don't lose by more than three goals, that'll be a win for us. Okay, so <laughs> that's how we're measuring success now, huh? Don't lose by more than three. Okay, well, pressure's on now, MLS. At this point, everyone on this all-star team has to be exhausted. They're probably not having fun anymore. They're ready to call this game. But not Real Madrid, they still have some fireworks. I mean, look at this through ball volley. This is ridiculous. Guti with the cutback, puts it away, and it's 4-0. You know what I think is funny? All of the big guns are still in the game for Real Madrid. You know how in some All-Star games, teams will just play a certain lineup for 45 minutes, then do a massive sub, basically bringing on a whole new team in the second half? Yeah, not in 2005. I get that you gotta put on a show for the home fans, but Real Madrid, are you mad at us or something? Like, it's preseason. Put on some of your subs. And then some nine minutes later, a little give and go, and Raul with the cheeky flick over Nick Romando. Hey, at least it wasn't Matt Racing goal this time. I mean, I think he suffered enough with the first four goals. Five nil final, which amazingly at the time was the biggest home win for Real Madrid in Estudio Santiago Bernabeu history. That record, thankfully, has since been broken. The MLS players and 
tell MLS fans should not have any shame about this result. Because I mean, what did you expect to happen? It's hard enough to win an All-Star game in North America, let alone on the other side of the world where you only have two days of rest from your last game, in which one of those days was spent traveling all day. So why would MLS agree to something like this? Well, exposure. I mean, 2005, it was a different time. MLS still wasn't doing great. It was still losing a lot of money. But the chance to go up against one of the biggest clubs in the world on Fox Soccer Channel, yeah, you don't really pass up that opportunity. But in the end, an all-star team consisting of the best players of your league getting blasted 5-0 is not a great look to the critics. And it makes you wonder how David Beckham was still convinced to come over to MLS just two years later. The Spanish media, they were not exactly impressed with MLS at the time either. I found this article on elmundo.es and I translated it to English. Maybe the most brutal line of all in this article read, when there is no rival, it is like playing against a group of young boys. And it is that the selection of Major League Soccer was a team simulation. It is true that these are players recruited to come play in Spain, but the image given by Steve Nichols' team was regrettable. Okay, I mean, good game to you guys too. This game was just fuel to the haters, but thank God it happened in 2005 where there wasn't really any social media because you can kind of pretend like this game just doesn't exist after a while if you stop talking about it. But if this game were played today, Twitter would never forget and they would be blowing up after a result like this. See, this is why MLS is trash. See, this is why the USMNT can't have players playing in MLS. See, this is why MLS needs promotion relegation. Yeah, MLS doesn't really talk about this game too much anymore. And I mean, like, for good reason. Like, why would they? It's kind of like their most embarrassing moment on the big stage, even if it happened when the league was only 10 years old. But I also think there's a reason why we haven't ever seen something like this before. There's a reason why MLS doesn't send out these select teams to go play anyone else. It's because it's too hard on the players. Logistically, it's asking too much of them. And when the MLS season now has 34 games, plus Leagues Cup, plus US Open Cup, plus CCL, yeah, this shit ain't ever gonna happen again.